Hi everybody, this is Erica Sabo. Welcome back. So today I'm continuing my Hayao Miyazaki Spotlight series. Uh, as you know, last time when I was reviewing Nausicaa, I was talking about how this next one would be my absolute favorite Miyazaki film to date. And that film is Princess Mononoke or Mononoke Hime. This is a, a lovely film and this was actually my first foray into Miyazaki's films. I remember getting this one when I was about I believe 13 or 14 years old, I got it on VHS as a gift from a friend and I didn't know anything about Miyazaki's works at this point and I was just totally enchanted by the experience and I couldn't believe how much it was able to mold me later on in life and how it opened me up to the world of Miyazaki itself. So I really, really look forward to doing this review for you today. So let's get started. Ashitaka, the lone prince of the Amishi people, sets off on a journey to save his home and find answers behind a deadly curse he's stricken with. That journey takes him further than he could have ever imagined and finds his life entwined with a mysterious girl named San and the pursuit for truth in a battle between nature and civilization. Clocking in at a little over two hours, Princess Mononoke has a quality, a magic to it, that only Miyazaki could accomplish. It's top-notch, epically vivid, yet at times serene visuals in combination with Hisashi Joe's brilliantly timeless music provides us with an emotional energy that is as rich as it is real. Easily one of the darkest Miyazaki works to date, Princess Mononoke effortlessly opens us up to a world that's on the brink of life and death. However, what makes it so compelling is the fact that it's so similar to the world we live in today. The world of fantasy isn't limited to gods and demons. It's those familiar social commentaries that constantly challenge us to explore. Of course, some might be deterred by Princess Mononoke for its depiction of violence, but this is never done purely for the sake of visual spectacle. These visuals, as brutal as they may sometimes be, articulates the film's raw nature and adds to its rich narrative structure. I couldn't imagine the film being depicted in any other way. These are but a few reasons why Princess Mononoke is so near and dear to me and is still my favorite Miyazaki film to date. The rush of emotions I feel each time I watch this film never ceases to amaze me. Magic exists in so many shapes and forms, and Princess Mononoke reminds me of that time and time again. So I hope you enjoyed my review of Princess Mononoke. It was a utter pleasure to be able to talk about this film and to be able to uh, express my passions so deeply and to be able to express the emotions that I was able to convey inside of me and maybe was able to convey in you as well. Mononoke is a favorite amongst many people or even if it's not your favorite, it's one that's very memorable and one that I think a lot of people tend to pinpoint when they talk about Miyazaki's works, especially because it stands out so much. It's so much darker in scope. It's just, it's such a profound film in Miyazaki's library. I'm so excited to continue on with this Spotlight series and it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure doing all of these Spotlight series for all of you. So I really hope you enjoy and do stay tuned next week for another one of these, okay? Alright, peace.